Hey everybody, my name is Rick, and I've been part of the CIS Critical Security Controls panel for a number of years, including version 8, which I am talking about in this series, where we are at the 11th video. Uh, feel free to go look in the description below for the links to my other 10 videos going through the 18 controls for version 8 of the Critical Security Controls. And I also have a link below to be able to go to uh, cissecurity.org to download a copy of your controls for yourself to be able to follow along at home. So today we're talking about control number 11, data recovery. Data recovery moved down one spot on the list from version 7 where it was control 10, but technically in its defense, we got rid of control 9, which was ports and protocols, which I forgot to bring up when we did that last time. Um, here is control 9. By control nine. Um, if you'd like to go to control number four video, I have a whole rant about control nine if you want to kind of go into that. Anyway, this is another one of those one to one updates from version seven to version eight. So this should be a pretty quick video. Um, all but one of the controls of the safeguards are implementation group one, and I'll go over that. In version eight, we really wanted to focus more on the recovery process than the backup process, which is kind of the language we were using previously. We also talk in the narrative about ransomware and how recovery supports ransomware or when it doesn't support ransomware, but I will get into that. So let's look at the safeguards. There are five safeguards and we'll bring up uh, version eight control 11 here and control 10 from version seven over here. They both have five safeguards. Remember, we named subcontrols to safeguards, and we ordered this reorder the safeguards to align with the implementation group. Like, you know, why is 10.3 a not an implementation group one where it should be, you know, at the end over here? Anyway, 11.1 um, establish and maintain data recovery process. Uh, as you've seen, it's very common for us to have this as the first safeguard in version eight. Um, establish a process is important. Um, in version seven, 10.1, we just said do regular backups. And 11.2, perform automated backups. This is taken from 10.1. And 11.3, protect recovery data is taken from 10.4, protect backups. And 11.4, establish and maintain an isolated instance of recovery data. This is pretty much a rewording of, of 10.5. And in 11.5, test data recovery is taken from 10.3, but, but more specific to the recovery process, not just testing the backup media. This is one of the only non-implementation group one safeguards, so really a good idea to check your media and your recovery process, you know, be for even for an implementation group one organization. We got rid of 10.2, uh, where we just said perform complete system backups. This would be, you know, certainly defined in the process we developed where in 11.1. So now that we kind of went over the things, let's take these down and we'll put up the details over here. Um, you know, uh, and we'll talk about the five safeguards and more car in, in more detail. So an 11.1 establish maintain data recovery process. We just got the scope of the activities to include recovery prioritization and securing the backup data. And we asked to review this process annually. In 11.2, perform automated backups is based on the scope and the process we define in 11.1. And we asked to run at least weekly. In 11.3, protect recovery data. We indicate protection is based on the data sensitivity or classification and reference the use of encryption or data separation based on the data security requirements. In 11.4, establish and maintain an isolated instance of recovery data. This refers to version control, multiple backup destinations like offline systems or into the cloud. And 11.5, test data recovery. We ask to perform recovery at least quarterly for a sample of the assets. And again, where is it defined? In 11.1 process. So now let's take that down and we'll bring up the upfront material. So in the narrative, we condense the overview. As I said, we change the focus to be more about recovery than just the backup. And we define the goal to return to a pre-incident and trusted state. In, in version seven, we only said like properly backup critical information for timely recovery. And why this control is critical, we start with discussion of cybersecurity triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and remark that availability is often the most critical for some organizations as they couldn't function without the availability of data or if it's the data is untrusted. 
We talk about how attackers often make changes to asset configurations. They can either add accounts or malicious applications, change registry entities, turn off security services, delete logs, corrupt files, make the asset insecure in many different ways. Though we need to remember that sometimes these actions are not malicious, but just based on human error. So having a, a recent clean backup to restore an asset to its trusted state is a critical thing. We go into ransomware and how backups can help an organization recover from a ransomware incident. However, <laughs> we temper that by saying and highlighting the fact that more recent techniques of attackers are to steal the data first before encrypting it. And then they use it for extortion in case you don't want to pay for the recovery key. And we end by saying implementation of guidance from the critical security controls will help and reduce the risk of ransomware because these are mostly um, about failure of hygiene. You know, something wasn't updated, there was an open port, something was not noticed that before. It's 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 really in very rare exceptions some you know targeted at advanced hacking technique that that got somebody in for a ransomware. So let's switch to page two and just the final little procedures and tools. We talk about data recovery procedures should be defined in the data management process described in control number three about data protection um, and include backup procedures based on the data value, sensitivity, or the data retention requirements. We reiterate testing the recovery process at least once per quarter against a sample of assets and to validate that the restoration was complete and functional. Finally, we end with the advice that in case of a malware infection on an asset, to restore from a version that predates the original malware infection, because we don't want to just restore malware over and over again, go back to where it was originally clean. So, and that wraps up Control 11. I told you it was quick. Hopefully that was helpful to go over the changes between version 7 and version 8. If you haven't already, go download the controls yourself from cissecurity.org. And if you have any questions or comments, sign up for our workbench, you know, also on cissecurity.org, where you can, you know, contribute or ask questions and get answers for things that you want. And as always, feel free to leave a comment below for me and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day. Hey everybody, as I've said before, I have no pictures of pets to share, but I have lots of interesting art figures. This particular one was made out of some molding from a piece of furniture and has beaded arms and robot face. Have a great day.